We begin the disassembly of the watch movement by removing the ratchet wheel. Followed by the click spring, using a piece of pegwood here to make sure that the clip spring is held in place while I release the tension on it. The click is left in place, I always leave these wherever possible and uh, remove, clean and lubricate them on reassembly. Next to be removed is the crown wheel which is held by two small screws through a centre plate that the crown wheel revolves around, um, the one that looks like a surprised little guy. And checking the teeth of the crown wheel, I'm looking to see if there's any damage underneath from the damaged winding pinion. Uh, there's a little bit of wear, but it might actually be usable as is. Next up is the bridge which covers the fourth wheel and escape wheel. This is lifted away very carefully because of the bent fourth extended fourth wheel pivot. And then to remove the remainder of the train after the escape wheel has been removed, we remove the barrel bridge, which is held in place by three screws. It's always a good idea on an unfamiliar movement to check that these screws are all the same length or otherwise because sometimes you'll find that one is shorter or longer than the others and they have to be refitted in a specific order otherwise you will normally encounter problems i.e. for example if a longer screw is fitted where a shorter one should be it can catch and bind on a part and prevent running. The bridge is wiggled free carefully and uh, you'll note I use a, a screwdriver to gently lever at the stem side because the setting lever screw quite often can be a bit of a tight fit, a friction fit, especially if it's been slightly chewed up over the years from being loosened and tightened. And then removal of the train wheels begins by removal of the centre wheel, second wheel, and then the third and fourth wheels respectively. More on the fourth wheel a little later in the video. The barrel then just lifts away and that's put to one side in preparation for removal of the mainspring. At this point I'm unscrewing the setting lever screw fully and the setting lever just drops away underneath and then the screw can be lifted clear. And here I can remove the stem, the winding pinion and the clutch. Onto the dial side, the setting lever spring assembly is removed. This 
this is held in place by two screws. And you'll note on lifting away the spring as I turn it over that there are two intermediate gears which are stuck to the back of the plate which suggests uh, shows evidence of being over oiled in the past you'll notice that the minute wheel almost came away with the plate there as well So those are just put back in place so you can see how they fit. And then the yoke and the yoke spring are removed, followed by the minute wheel and the intermediate wheels. just retrieving the setting lever which fell away when the setting lever screw was unscrewed here the barrels disassembled by removing the barrel cap the barrel arbor and feeding out the mainspring and the mainspring as you will see is very badly set and will need replacement And here's a close-up of the fourth wheel pivot uh, just so you can see how badly bent that is and also you'll note distinct bluing on the entirety of that pivot and the pinion uh, which looks to me as if at some point it has been removed from the wheel and has been tempered to allow straightening in the past and here I'm just taking a closer look at the crown wheel to assess the damage of the teeth and uh, here you can clearly see the severe damage to the winding pinion and then prior to the movement being ready for the cleaning machine the balance is refitted and the end stones remain on while it goes through the cleaning machine these are then removed and cleaned separately as are the pivots of the balance staff So just to end this video, the pivot that I showed previously, I've had a little go at trying to straighten that. It's not perfect yet, it needs a bit more work. It's not going to be perfect, unfortunately, but I think I can probably get it a little bit straighter and I might just manage to get that something like usable. And you can see as uh, as i will previously explain uh, in the voiceover as you'll have um, hopefully heard if uh, if the edit goes okay that there's definite evidence of this having been tempered it's it's blued right the way through and i wouldn't be surprised if it's actually been removed from the wheel tempered and uh, straightened at some point in the past and then restaked onto the wheel 
so I don't want to push this too much and uh, push it too far as it were but what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll just zoom out and show you how I've straightened this so far so down here on the bench I've got my sturdy stainless tweezers these are quite old and uh, there's actually a favorite pair this one but they're quite old as you can see they've been um, dressed many times and they're pitted from being old as well here I've got a burnishing file uh, which has got a fine file on one side and a flat burnishing surface on the other and here is just a stainless staking block and what I have done initially uh, as you saw there was the double bend so the initial part of the procedure was to grip the pivot in the tweezers and try and straighten it into a single bend because while you've got a double bend you're, you're fairly restricted in rolling this to smooth it out so the initial part was to get the top part of the bend to bend in the same direction as the lower part so it was a single bend going that way rather than going like that shape so once that was done the pivot was then gripped in the tweezers quite firmly as i said these are really thick sturdy stainless steel tweezers gripped in the pivot firmly and rotated um, just by hand like so until it starts to achieve a degree of straightness that i can work with at which point it's then placed on the edge of the staking block so that the entirety of that pivot up to the little shouldered section sits on the smooth surface and the smooth side of the burnisher is placed onto there and being supported by my fingers at the back here it's just rolled back and forth um, just gradually bit by bit until it is straightened out now this doesn't always work and this actually worked far easier than it would on a hardened pivot which is how I'm now convinced that it has been tempered at some point so extreme care will need to be taken if I can get it straighter extreme care will need to be taken on reassembly to make sure that it doesn't bend again um, so while it's better than it was I'm not a hundred percent absolutely convinced that it's going to work yet but it's certainly worth a little try so it needs a little bit more work what I'm going to do now is get that onto the uh, Jacko tool and uh, and burnish that up a little bit more I don't want to if I can avoid it because you can see I've already polished the pivot a bit I don't want to burnish it too much because burnishing although it doesn't remove material it will polish it and flatten the uh, the metal um, and I do obviously want the the wheel to be able to grip when it gets pressed back onto there uh, but this will actually be a nice opportunity to try out my um, my burnishing files which were very kindly donated to me by a member of the uh, various watch groups I'm on uh, Neil McKelleg a thoroughly nice fella who got uh, a whole load of tools recently and uh, and had some burnishing files in there and said well you know they're no good to me and, uh, and threw them my way which I'm very grateful for so um, so I shall be having a play with those um, and, uh, on with this on the Jacko tool and see how they do so that's where we'll leave this video other than cleaning this, pegging out the jewel holes and everything else the whole assembly is ready for the cleaning machine and then I can reassemble and see how it performs I will have to find a mainspring in the meantime to uh, to see how it will perform reassembled obviously I can't use the old one it's very very badly set as you saw and it will need a, a new one on replacement so uh, so that's where we are just now so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one